Hello everyone and welcome to this, the first Culture Collective International Perspectives talk. i um, really pleased to have so many people uh, with us live on the day um, and watching back today on this edited recording of the session. So you're really welcome along. Thank you for checking in. Um, I'm Catherine Welch. My pronouns are she and her um, and I'm a white woman in my 30s with short, dark, scruffy hair uh, today wearing a purple top. Um, and I'm the program lead for Culture Collective. Um, many people who have been part of this event or who are watching again um, will already be very familiar with our work. But if you're new to Culture Collective, welcome along. Um, we are a network of 26 participatory art projects uh, led by local communities and artists and creative organisations all over Scotland. Um, this is one year uh, into a two and a half year project funded by Creative Scotland and the Scottish Government. So as part of Culture Collective, we're really interested in bringing people together to share experiences, um, to see what's common to participatory art projects and what's different, what's locally unique to different projects in different places. So this is the first of what we hope will become a semi-regular um, series of international perspectives where we welcome people who are working with similar values um, and with similar aims across the world to share what they've been working on um, to see how that compares and might inform our practice here in Scotland. Um, so if you'd like to be part of those conversations as they evolve, um, you can sign on to our mailing list at the Culture Collective website um, and keep an eye on the events page there for more details as they emerge. Um, when this session was presented live, it was Zoom captioned and we'll make the captions available in the recording as well um, and BSL interpreted. So our thanks to Karen and Spina who interpreted this session live for us. Um, that's the practicalities. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Asha, who is the Community Engagement Officer at Art27 Southside in Edinburgh, one of our Culture Collective projects, uh, to introduce today's speakers and the rest of the session. So over to you, Asha. Hello, everyone. My name is Asha. Um, thank you, Catherine, for the introduction. Um, I'm really excited to be involved in this uh, talk, International Perspectives. It's uh, Today we're going to be introducing an organization which is really, really close to my heart and I think they're absolutely incredible um, in the work they're doing. And as Catherine said, I am Community Engagement Officer at Art27 Scotland and we work around cultural rights. So our organization is based on Article 27 of the Declaration of Human Rights, which states that everyone has a right to participate in cultural life. So, first of all, I'd like to give a little bit of background on um, Arte Maurice, which is the group that we're going to be talking to in this video. Now, some of you may not have heard of Timor Leste, some of you may have. Um, I feel it's a little bit of a generational thing because they were really big in the news in the 90s. Um, and some people hear a lot about it, some people don't, but this is a map of Timor-Leste um, or East Timor, and it's situated next to Indonesia, so just above Australia. And it's a really small country. It's half of the island of Timor, which um, half of this island, which is now Timor-Leste, was a Portuguese colony. Uh, before they were a Portuguese colony, they were really thriving within the Southeast Asian trading networks. Um, so once it was uh, colonized by Portugal, they were um, in control until the 1970s. And once they left, Indonesia almost immediately invaded. It was about 10 days um, between the Portuguese colonization and Indonesian occupation. So they had a short-lived independence, period of independence in the 70s, and then they were um, sort of recolonized by Indonesia. Um, it wasn't until a UN-sponsored referendum in 1999 when the people of Timor voted for independence. And in 2002, they became the youngest dem democratic nation in the world. And it's also not only is it a really young nation in terms of time period, but it's also the population is very, very young. 
And I think around 70% of Timor's population is under 35 years old. And the period of the Indonesian occupation was characterized by uh, a lot of violence in this period. And a lot of Timorese people fought for their independence and uh, fought in a resistance army, especially a lot of young men. And this is kind of the context um, that exists in Timor today. So they're 20 years um, out of their independence now. I have family living in Timor, so I visited a couple of times prior to the pandemic. And this is when I came across Ati Maurice at this time. Um, here are some pictures of the building that they used to inhabit. Um, it's a really, really beautiful space. I took these pictures on a visit back in 2019. So it was a huge compound um, and there's a lot of artists living in this space um, and they've been using this building for since independence, so since around 2002, 2003. Um, and I immediately loved this place. And in Culture Collective, I think we talk a lot about placemaking and how to create a space that's really valuable in the community. And this definitely felt like a really calming and vibrant and exciting place to be. Um, we'll be talking about this a bit more throughout the presentation, but in December 2021, so just a few months ago, Artie Maurice were actually evicted from their building by the government. Um, so it's this beautiful old building, um, which they've decorated everywhere. And they were evicted uh, in December. And basically they argued that it was an infringement of their uh, cultural rights. They argued it's based on, based on Article 27 of the Declaration of Human Rights, which hit so close to home for R27 because this is exactly the kind of work we work on, um, access to culture. And um, they wrote a letter to the UN and argued that this was really unjust and they deserve a place to practice art. Um, not only is this a space for practicing artists, but it's also a school for young people, people who were affected by the war, and people who want to learn skills to go abroad, want to learn uh, practical skills, also language skills. Um, so it's a really, really important place in the community and for in the cultural life of the community. Um, we were all really, really inspired by their work at Art27. And this is why we kind of wanted to bring them in today to talk to everyone and on this recording. And this is some of the pictures of their recent, since they've been evicted, what they've been doing, um, going to various spaces in Timor and Dili and exhibiting their work. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of what we have. And they, they use a lot of kind of recycled materials for their sculptures. And they also, as well as dealing with issues of, um, you know, youth engagement and um, kind of trauma after the war, it's a lot of issues they grapple with is things around climate change and what this means for Timor and how this young nation is making its way in the world. Um, so yeah, I'd like to thank them so much for joining us and they're gonna be sharing with us a bit of their music, a bit of their art today, and then we'll have an opportunity to talk to them about their experiences, um, their history, and ask some questions. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sasa, for the introduction. And I think um, the temporary studio now, the small studio that we have, then I will go on with a little bit introduction of how we exist them. Then we can continue. Yeah, let's focus. <laughs> the music is called My Valley. It's um, usually music for all Timorese travel. And the, the song is is uh, produced, it's a very old song uh, from our seniors artists. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
This is very old folk song that very famous and special for all Timorese. Almost everybody uh, knew this song. But uh, everybody sing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to just uh, take the laptop and show the studio where um, all my members are gathering at the moment. Uh, until we managed to have a new space. Uh, this is where, at the moment, they they gathering together. The studio is called One for All. Yeah. <laughs> new title. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about um, how Atiway started and um, the history of the school? Yeah. So um, Artemoris was started in uh, 1st of February 2003, was founded by a Swiss artist with his wife uh, called Luca Ganser, and he passed away a year ago, but uh, the wife is still alive and lives in Italy. Uh, together with um, a lot of my friends, um, we are around 12 people and we start Artemoris. Uh, since then, at the beginning, we start only with the uh, fine art, uh, which is mainly painting and uh, drawing. Uh, but then it, it's enlarged into uh, music, uh, theater, uh, multimedia. Um, but in daily operation, administratively, um, we only focus on, on the painting and on multimedia, but the theater group, they have their own organization and also the music, they manage themselves, but we serve the same compound where uh, as I saw the picture before. Um, in the beginning, we saw the place as um, it's almost for us, the man knew the first member. Uh, it's almost um, a way of trauma healing for us uh, through art. Um, then later when we go, we found it very, actually it's very estimate for, for a lot of young people, uh, very attractive for them. And it's also helping the young people to forgot what, what, what happened in the past and stuff. 
and we find out that it's uh, a new way of of uh, dealing with our daily life um, and it's new experience. So we committed with this mission and we continue at the Morris. We open three, we offer three classes from painting to music to multimedia, every subject that we have to all the young people who came. Uh, most of the um, students who came daily was will be taught by my mem one Alfred's uh, uh, the man here. I I never teach, <laughs> but he does. I I think I started in the beginning, but I was always uh, in the office. But everybody who live in in Artemis is uh, um, carried two main responsibilities. First uh, is um, make art themselves and check and serve whatever they have learned in, in the center. And, um, in the past, we opened uh, the opportunity for any volunteers who are from overseas, uh, any countries who are willing to come. Usually, we don't have money to pay, but we, uh, we can accommodate in our place. Um, and they, they teach us any, any form of art. Um, and also later, a lot of uh, paid volunteers from Australia who came teach us in all all way, all different ways, from administration, finance, until art. And that's how also we get a multimedia also set up because we have a chance to have a teacher from Australia and other places. But um, it's, uh, it's almost the uh, growing of Artemis. It's, it's not purely because only us, but it's, it's contribution of nearly the whole world because we have so many volunteers. And I I don't want to start mentioning country by country because I might be forgot some <laughs> on the way because there's so many artists who, who came and involved it's from all of from Africa, almost the whole country continent, uh, all the continent in, in this planet is coming. So we are so privileged. I think it's, it was also, as you mentioned, because we were as one of the newest nations and the UN was here. So everybody's uh, traveling here. And usually when they come around, some some people are, uh, most, some artists are come and stay, find our place and interesting to share their knowledge. So. That's how we also develop our ourselves. Because most of us, none of us have been into art school before. We are all self-taught and it's just because we like it, so we, we start to get it. And usually we we learn all the art history and stuff through those volunteers who came uh, uh, and taught us in our, our space. And the idea also, in the beginning, we thought we will have a minute to set up the center in, we have a 13 uh, district, now it's called what municipal, but uh, Timor, East Timor have 13 district only. So we were thinking to set up the same center in all the all the 13 district, but we didn't manage because we, we are lack of uh, funding, uh, human resource, uh, material, uh, everything, it was just, become impossible to usually we, we take our old truck and drive around the country, stay for one, two night and uh, share uh, our, the art. We usually meet, we, we call people with uh, African drums, play some music and we start teaching, giving them paper and pencil and start art classes in the street or wherever they, they give us space to give. Um, but that's also how the Timorese people also, the most young Timorese start to know uh, us. And once they came to Dili to study, for study, they, most of them come and study at Artemis, continue uh, the knowledge at Artemis. Um, but how Artemis is able to do this work is because we decide to live together uh, in the compound where just before we, we were evicted, because we believe by living together we can share. Because um, I think as I have, uh, I shall have a little bit of information, but we are culturally 
we are um, community living. It's always uh, everything are sharing and always work in, in group and was never individuals. So I think um, we, we believe that by being living together, we can share uh, the, the knowledge uh, more effectively uh, rather than uh, stay at home uh, as an individual studio. And that's how also for a very long time, we, most of us, we don't call ourselves teacher, but we, we say we share what we have. Because uh, really, we, we, we are not qualified buying as a, as a teacher, art teacher. Uh, that's how we, uh, by living together, we also not focus on the art, but we also learn how to live uh, as a human being, as a young man, uh, that full of curiosity and uh, how to manage ourselves. So um, in daily running, what we do is like, um, each member will uh, weekly rotate to um, lead the daily operation of art Morris. Um, it, it, even so, the person is so shy, we, we don't care. Everybody has to have that responsibility. Um, we believe by doing that, we, can, we train their uh, mentality. Because as um, Timur, mo most of us, when we were young, we are so shy to speak out and stuff. So by giving the responsibility, I, um, we hope that all the members have their confidence to do whatever they like. Because um, even with Artemis, our purpose is just to use art as um, a way of educating ourselves, also seeing how our life towards the future. Um, we, we don't really focus on uh, emphasizing to become a famous artist or painter one day. If, if one come up one day, we will be very happy. But um, most of most of us are very committed ourselves until today, <laughs> on and off. But um, nearly we are already 19 years, three months now uh, by being together. Even after the victims, a lot of my members are um, some are in England, even uh, Australia. They each one, each of them doing their own activity. But the the spirit that um, being uh, the founder or owner of the Artemis are uh, very strong. So usually, because we didn't get any funding from all of all, um, uh, other places, usually when we run out from food and stuff, all our members from abroad, they usually uh, also donate a uh, little money just to make sure the young boys who stay will, will still have enough food. <laughs> to keep the, the place going. Um, that's how, uh, that's why it's guaranteed our existence until now. So, um, yeah, and it, it didn't become as um, organizations that belong to someone, that, but it's, uh, we give the feeling of it's belong to everybody, whoever been involved. So, um, um, because only by doing that way, we, we can guarantee the, the continuation of, of the center. Uh, Timor has had a history of conflict, and um, we'd like to know <clears throat> why um, community arts is so important in Timor, especially after the conflict that took place. For us, talking about communities too big. <laughs> But uh, yet we are living as a community. I think the uh, the efficiency or the effect of art in our community is a um, very positive um, for our well, controlling our emotion and um, keep us quiet. Um, because by doing Artwork, you, you usually focus and you, you struggle with you, your own mind. And that's a uh, help us. I think maybe as I have a uh, um, little bit of the, the story, but most of Timor, we are very small, but um, very aggressive mind. <laughs> uh, and I, in, in our community, we find art helping us uh, to not act like very aggressive like uh, others, but 
also whoever been joined and even people who uh, just came by to watch the arts happening. Um, until today, we have the confidence, we believe the impact of art uh, on uh, transporting all the energies, um, the negative and aggressiveness of energy that we have. It's the it's best way for, for Timorese um, to use the media of art. Um, because by doing art, it's uh, still representing our um, emotion and stuff. All the angers, the unsatisfied, but you can you throw it in in your artwork, and uh, it's still representing your emotion, but it didn't create um, violence and and all like uncontrolled behavior. Uh, as uh, as um, it's I I don't know if it's culturally, but it's just because of all all the war and the occupations uh, in the past and it's almost timorese are very good in um, reacting very aggressive uh, in, against any moment or movement and i think we we, we in, in in our community we believe um, uh, the media that we we are working now is helping us a lot uh, and making us act differently um, and much more positive as a human and also as a Timorese until now. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, um, so I wanted to ask a little bit about, um, since, since you were evicted from your building, um, could you talk a little bit about this and how it's impacted your work and why you think this happened in Timor? It was exactly on December last year. We, we, we have been evicted uh, from the compound that we have been used. Also nearly, was also nearly 19, 18 something months, <laughs> uh, years. But um, it, it is, for us, the building is important. It's not because they want to um, at the most want to put all the members in in one place, but uh, the the space has become very important for as I explained before that it's very important. This young man and all the arts working together. Uh, since we are self taught, it's uh, always good to have them together so they can inspire each other. It will become a um, you know, self development like one will be better than the other, but um, we will not be able to uh, help each other. And that's how the space is very important for us. And also the space is much more need for learning uh, where we offer the free education. And as you know, in our education system, the, in the curriculum, there was no art uh, subject yet. And <clears throat> We are not the only one, but for a long time we, we were almost the, the, the start point. And in recent year, we have also our friend opening at the center in the, in the city that also was evicted um, two, three weeks ago. <laughs> uh, but the, the person who runs is also coming from Martin Morris. So, um, it's we we needed a, a space or center is more to gather to give the opportunity for other young people who, who are wanting or keen to learn art uh, and also by in this uh, the timor is a very small island but it's very so uh, multicultural uh, culturally it's so diversity and it's um, in small island, but we have totally different culture by language, by behavior, as, and we think that by living together, it's very important to uh, make the people uh, seeing each other, uh, seeing ourselves as a Timorese, and uh, we work together in the difference that we have, and uh, it didn't be the difference that we have didn't become a gap or. Or to be to be um, like the blink of uh, any conflict between us, 
because um, I think the Indonesian they use that issue a lot, and even in 2006 we also have that issues. Um, so being together is very important as to create a community to uh, I think to start um, the living of the youth as, as a, one community um, accepting the difference that we all have um, and keep working together based on our difference. That I'll tell you one add some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, one of uh, one of uh, the beautiful things uh, for us was uh, during the crisis 2006, where we we uh, how say we don't have this uh, th those difference uh, between country or between um, how say clans or or tribes. how yeah tribes or how people try to separate in in there. But we we got IDPs from all over the. The country. It is mean uh, we don't we don't we don't want to be part of that problem. And people that agree, they cannot stay with us. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Um, I think I'll pass over to Robert now to ask one of the questions. One of the questions that I had just a little bit, not just to go back a little moment, is I'm, I'm not sure if people understand the scale of the conflict in East Timor uh, and the and could you just talk very briefly to just to fill people in about that because it, it still is very much a post-conflict situation that you're in um there were there were quite a lot of people killed and hurt and things weren't there during 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 that period during that earlier period so as i um, mentioned a little bit before he is that um east timor is where it's a half island but uh, we have uh, 32 different dialects and uh, local dialects. And between those 32, uh, some are connect, some are not even connect. Uh, like Alpha and me, we come from the same place, but we speak uh, totally different dialects. Yes. And usually with the dialects, we, we live in some similarity in daily life, but uh, a lot of things are so totally different, uh, and usually those differences are using um, to fight each other or compete each other in 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 a, a negative way. And I think usually it, uh, it was even sharpening by the occupy occupant uh, during the Indonesian time because they want us to divide, so they use it, uh, that difference very smartly. Uh, and even after the independence, we also seen ourselves like uh, we ed ed identify ourselves through our dialects because the, my dialect is my community. I don't belong to the other one, and not very big scale, but uh, those um, emotions is um, uh, a lot going around with uh, living with the Timorese community. And actually, after in 2002, after when we came down from the mountain, was a lot of fight between us. <laughs> then we were laugh. I say, when we don't have no enemy, we fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the the biggest the biggest scale that even politician and other part using is the even we are um, half island, but it, even the big dividers is they call east and west. And that's where the big breakout was in 2006. Uh, and the big issue was they say the East uh, fight more, fought more against the Indonesian than the West and all that stuff. And they unhappy and it uh, started breaking out from the um, army and going down to the um, community. But as Alfie mentioned before, we were so lucky to have Artemis. We didn't like we, yeah. we, those situations break us apart. We, we are together and we, we even uh, hosting IDPs for internal displaced people <laughs> in our our school. That's really interesting. Thank you. Rebecca's asked a, a, a interesting question. Um, you describe a 
a kind of uh, the dynamic that's 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 in there between between you all and how you're kind of managing to sort of live together. And she was wondering about the relationship between that and the wider community. Does that influence people around? Is it you know just is something a little bit about the relationship of your community to the other communities around you? I think the 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 crisis is. Um... What it's become a proof for us that uh, our existence was really effective for for our country situation, because um, mm. this is, as I say, it's not only different dialect, but also we have um, physically the, the um, people from the east, and uh, so so many people are a uh, little bit taller than the others, and um, more uh, rights skin than the others and so all that identity but during the crisis when we go around uh, people even stop fighting when when we go past the uh, the conflict area with the, the car of artemis and i think when none of us were big hero and stuff we just also a young kids uh, starting the organization together but i think most of the population understand what we are doing and uh, the good impact that they have. That's why none of n- none of the part want to harm us. So they they even stop to fight until we go through, or when we come and we call together, they don't fight. <laughs> so that's how we see ourselves. The artist impacting directly uh, in in solving the conflict, or we, at least we see something that um, maybe pause uh, a bit of the conflict. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we can stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, that's extraordinary and uh, such valuable work as well. And, and kind of some. I, I, I was working recently in in Derry on the Northern Irish border there, and, and many years later, that kind of work is still just by doing the art artwork and bringing people together it, it gives people that space really interesting um, Catherine's asked a, uh, a question about uh, climate change uh, and we know it's a sort of it's a serious issue uh, in in Timor and I, I'm just wondering as as artists and uh, how you are addressing that or, or, or what's your approach to to that kind of really overwhelming issue I guess um through the climate changing um i think a, a lot of the sculpture that uh were shown in the picture before it's a uh, here it's new country and we everything's new for us so mm-hmm. you know the behavior of um, managing our garbage or uh behave of cutting trees down uh, um for my understanding, I think we, we have no industry, no big industry around. So um, the impact uh, towards the climate change um, from our side, from this small country, is not very big. But I mean, the behavior of the human is not because we do it in necess- uh, like um, in purpose, but uh, it's lack of our knowledge uh, mm-hmm. of how to deal with the uh, climate change stuff. So, uh, as um, our tradition here, we are not allowed to uh, uh, lecture our older <laughs> as a tradition. So what we do is we go and collect uh, the garbage and stuff. We create the sculpture and we start promoting <laughs> don't pollute our beads with the garbage. But you can, if you collect your garbage, you can do this kind of thing. That's, that's how we um, facilitate, facilitate or mediate uh, the education part. But we also involving in promoting not cutting trees, uh, making yeah. uh, illustration and books for, for the community, and usually through other uh, NGOs or organizations that work with the civil society and stuff. Oh, that's that, that, that's really interesting. Um, I wondered, I just I, I wondered from going on from that, what you would how you would like uh, the Culture Collective, which is, as, as, as Catherine explained, were a kind of a group of um, 26 different organisations working ac- across Scotland. And in, and in relation to the situation with your premises, which seems shocking that they 
that they evicted you and um, and things. Is is there anything that we can do to to support the incredible work that you're doing out there? Is there what would you like? What would you like us to try and do? Would you like us to raise it with politicians, for example? I don't know. What what what's how how is that campaigning side of going for you at the moment? At the moment, we we still. Uh, I'm still on slow move because of the election and people change and stuff. But uh, um, what in our mind is that I think through the collective culture, my can help this. Um, for me, it's very good to call back the memory on because my members keep changing. Some are go, leaving, uh, new are coming. <laughs> And what I'm, I'm dreaming of to share the same experience to all all the members. Which um, in the past we have a lot of opportunity to have exhibition um, performance with other galleries and arts, mostly Australia, but a, a lot of in, in Swiss because the founder are yeah. from Swiss. Uh, some in Italy. And for for me. At the moment, my notion, I think uh, the cultural collective of Scotland can help us if um, you can able to host one or two exhibitions, yeah. including uh, having some of my members to be participate. Because uh, as I say, some are uh, can represent as individual, but usually uh, we always with Abtemori's name, we always go collectively. Um, so even one or two person go, but most of the member will also have to give one or two piece of the work to to be in, in, included. And might be in long run, I we might be try to do fundraising to raise a little bit of money to buy land and have our own space. <laughs> One day it's a very far away. But we we might be start after after May. <laughs> Because a lot of things will happen during that month, and nobody will uh, give attention in in the country for our activity. So I think after that uh, crowd busy month, we will start to recall again uh, uh, the local or old friends to to help us on how to uh, maybe m m have a little bit of funding to buy our own land and we'll start building it slow. Sounds like a solution. I'm just wondering, Catherine, I'll put you on the spot now with through through Culture Collective. If 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 there were people that were interested in, in, in hosting Arte Morris's work, do you think the Culture Collective could respond to that request and f and find a way to bring them over and perhaps share their work through the Culture Collective in, in, in the next tranche of funding? I, I don't know, is, is that f fit with anything? I think it's a really interesting question, isn't it? Because this is, as I said at the beginning, this is the first of our International Perspectives talks. And it's fascinating to think about what we might learn and what might grow out of this. I think considering this is the beginning of a conversation is absolutely the right way to do it. And it might be that as we get to know different projects in different countries, that each one goes on to become a different kind of relationship long term. And it would be lovely to to explore that. So, yeah, I'm really excited by this. This is step one. And, and let's let's keep the conversation going in however feels appropriate. Um, and as expected, already there are. Offices yeah, and I, I, I see, see the, the, the wonderful Govan Hill Baths project in Glasgow has already made you an offer, guys. So the, the ball's rolling. So, so there's, an, there's, an, there's an offer of an exhibition in Glasgow. In, in a, in I think a it's, a very, it's a very culture collective thing, isn't it? To bring people <laughs> together and see what yeah. comes of it. And often it grows arms and legs, which is the nicest. nicest. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a question. There's a question coming um from 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 it's actually come from art 27 from helen who's the co-director there and she's just asked about the 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 role of of women in your organization and um and now you sort of gender specific in working with uh men and boys because of of the the uh the situation or What's what's your relationship to to sort of women artists and things like that, and what are your priorities in that? Since we start, uh, we have um, 
We have around how many? Six or seven uh, women here, students. Until the day when we were a pet, we have only two girls. I live in the compound, sharing with, uh, with the boys. Um, we were targeting women since we, we, we start. <laughs> and, but honestly, I think we, we have different perspective, but um, I, I commit myself in Artemis because of my mother. She, she's a, a Thais weaver, a traditional coat weaver, uh, and um, a lot of cotton mixing and color and pattern. Uh, that's how I, I kind of fall into a drawing and coloring. Um, so also as a historic in the past, we have um, not a lot of fine art, but I, well, for my understanding until now, our woman, our mother are the art creator because they are the one really mixing color and create color in, in our life. Because most of our men usually have some carving, um, but usually uh, for um, local belief uh, purpose, as a cal cultural purpose as a sculptor, for worship and traditional house and stuff. Um, but really the stand as art to be appreciated was made by our women, our mothers, because they are the one creating all the clothes and the colorful ties that uh, uh, traditional clothes that we, they wore in the past. Another question that, that, that that's come in. Um, Article 27 of the human rights international human rights legislation guarantees cultural rights um, and have you have you used that in terms of what's happened to you recently in terms of losing your premises has that been useful at all um, kind of exerting your your right um, to culture look we are also when we start we also become one of the promoter of any human rights Mm -hmm. We make all the drawings, we donate to the government, and, but um, it's a new country and being led by all the um, former fighters, uh, it's uh, kind of hard for us um, uh, to go and seek the, all the rights that we have, because it's very mixed. Uh, it all, all depend on when they go. It seems that we may have gotten the most out of the internet connection for the day. What do you both think? I, th I think so. I think if, if people have got more questions and if people are really interested to, to host to host them on, on a visit. We'd really like to hear that and any more questions. And then what we can do is we can re-establish an internet connection and then speak to them and then share that really and share that response to that. Um, but I think just, just on their behalf to say that, that this is a kind of moment where they do need support from internationally from artists. Um, you know, the, it, it, the change of, I think the change of government um, is is complicated for them to to, negotiate their space in it and i think what happened to their last space which was beautiful um it was sort of give, decided to be given to veterans so uh of the war and so it was quite a complicated thing for them to argue against although there was quite a campaign there so it's 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 quite a complicated issue it's not that the government is hostile but the government has post-war got lots of different priorities but and i do think international pressure in the situation will help um and to um you know as we all know that art is often the bottom of the agenda when it comes to making cuts and things like that and i think that's the situation that they're in and that, that the government's not hostile to them in in as some people face but that in terms of spending priorities it's low i, I see tim you've got your hand up is that did you want to ask a question uh, I see just wanted to chip in on, yeah. you know, get the ball rolling on organizing something. Yeah. It, it's such an 
it's such a good fit for Governor Bars. It just can't let that particular opportunity go by. Um, I just flag up something else, which is that 2023 is a year of um, community property ownership um, in Scotland, and that I could easily imagine how uh, this could fit into that particular agenda as well, uh, which is something that we're looking at. Um, that it's not just about sort of rural um, ownership. It's also, we, we think about urban and uh, smaller community ownership or other forms of ownership in place. So uh, I could imagine how this could fit into the agenda for that. So, um, yeah, like I say, I think it would be a really good fit for us, uh, for the baths, because of just the nature of the building and, you know, it's um, uh, its use, which seems very similar. Uh, uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, yes, I, what I was going to say is I think that um, it what might be good for us now would be to try and find maybe a date or, you know, a, a time that would be really good for us to aim at. And then, um, and then we could work for it. I think the, the uh, if if the people who are in touch with them regularly could maybe start the, fleshing that out. The, 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 there was a time when they were planning; some were planning to come over to to um, to Europe for an exhibition. I'm just going to pop in the chat. Um, some of you who signed up in. Uh, last week to this session would have already been circulated this link but a few of you who joined later might not have um, there is a short documentary about Artemaris and um, which is on YouTube and I've just popped that in the chat for those who would like to know more um, but don't necessarily get the opportunity to ask those questions today and um, equally it might stimulate more questions um, which we can use as part of the follow-up from today's session so if you haven't seen that yet I think it's about 25 minutes um, and well worth a watch. And Asha, can I ask, do you, do you remember when they said they were coming over to Europe anyway and that we might be able to extend that trip uh, as a sort of a more cost-effective option? Because I think it is, it's quite a long way away and the, the travel expenses are quite high, aren't they, Asha? I think there was a possibility of them doing an exhibition in Portugal. Portugal, that's right. In May, perhaps. Um, but oh, I'm, is that? I'm not sure if that's still happening. Um, okay. I have to ask them. Helen has a hand up as well. Helen, did you want to come in? Oh, no, I was just going to briefly say, because I, I, I think there's something just about how they also operate, which is if we are talking about collective, what are collective power structures? And that it, it's a really important thing to discuss that you have to live your practice in some form. And for the culture collective in a discussion about what does that look like? I'm also just excited at the thought of having, you know, what Tim's saying about, you know, that space. When you're talking about buildings, I was talking about buildings and how to keep buildings alive and what are buildings for. Their discussion about the building was actually it, it was a facility for 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 them to learn and share and for people to come to, you know, to mean it, it was a kind of process of of sharing in an informal way. So there is something I think that the, in terms of the culture collective, there's all sorts of artist retreats in Scotland, but nobody can afford to go to them, and particularly if you're socially engaged, nor communities have any access to them. So what is that kind of place that might you know, help facilitate that kind of residence experience of living together and what the just that kind of physical physical um, uh, closeness demands of people and what can be shared in those informal kind of ways that they've been discussing. So I think there's an awful lot in here which can be unpacked and can be really exciting to think about in the future. That's, that, that's all I'm kind of wanting to celebrate about today's event. 
Yeah, I remember working in a project in in Nicaragua with a, a company called Nextel Yeros, and they bought a farm, and um, that was critical. And, and they turned one of the barns into a rehearsal studio, and that facilitated them for a long, long time. And then when they moved into the into the city post the the kind of revolutionary period, they gave their farm to to local farmers and supported them to. Uh, create a farming cooperative there, which was, which was a lovely outcome f for them as they were kind of resident in, in uh, Managua. So, so it's, yeah, it's great, um, Catherine. Thank you so much, Robert. I think let's leave it there. Um, it, it actually seems, uh, although this wasn't quite how we intended ending the session, actually that conversation we've already had about using this as the beginning of a conversation rather than the entirety of the conversation feels like it sits really well with where we've gotten to today. Um, so Asha, I'm going to come to you after this to help us continue some of those conversations and to think about how we can use this as the first step in um, learning from and with and sharing um, some of our practice with Iluatu and the Artemaris team. Um, before I close and thank everyone, Asha, did, was, was there anything that you wanted to add to leave us with? Um, it, it's fine if your voice doesn't feel up to that, but I do want to give you the opportunity of a last word. Um, yeah, my voice is really terrible at the moment, but I would love to like, continue this conversation and and be able to share with you guys um, more about Artie Maurice. Um, I think this is more of an introduction. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much. Um, let's close uh, in, in that case with a huge, recording a huge thanks to Iluatu and the Artie Maurice team for sharing their time with us this morning. Um, thank you also to Asha and to Robert for beautifully subbing for each other. Um, and for hosting today's session and the whole um, Art 2017 for introducing us um, to Artie Maurice and their work. Um, and thank you also to Karen and Sabina for translating today's sessions for us as well. Um, we will follow up with everybody who's registered for a ticket for today's session um, in due course with a recording, but more immediately um, to continue some of that conversation about what next. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us for a slightly chaotic, but nonetheless totally inspiring and fascinating morning. Um, it's been lovely to share some time with you this morning um, and look forward to doing it again soon. Um, enjoy the rest of your days, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>